So, we will continue to look, look to recycled aggregate, right? right? So, we will continue with this. I think I, wherever we stopped, maybe. Okay. So, I think what, what, we, what we are do, looking at at the last time is the allowable limits for certain things. For example, this Japanese standards break 2 to maximum 2 to 5 percent, right? I mean, you know, break in the demolished or particularly demolished waste, demolition waste, glass 0.1, plaster, etc., inorganic, plastic, wood, and not more than 6 percent total, all such material, right? Not more than 2 percent, all such materials. European code, construction and demolition waste, they classify it in certain nomenclature is there. For example, they call it RC, right? That is coming from construction material, concrete and related, basically concrete and related material, RU and RC, natural stone plus concrete, right? Then this is RA stands for bituminous material. So, if the source is bituminous material, I mean there is bituminous material in it, RB is brick, RG is glass, FLS floating stone, X others. So, this is a kind of classification or nomenclature the European code uses. So, for this, you know they have RC 90. Now, this means that this material will be more than 90 percent, concrete and such materials will be more than 90 percent. RC 70 means that this will be more than 70 percent. RC 90 D, D would stand for demolition, right? So, this kind of classification is there. Similarly, for, for bituminous material, R A less than 1 percent of bituminous material and so on. So, you will have a classification based on this. So, for example, R C U 90, right? R C U 90 means R C U 90 would mean this basically natural stone and concrete they are more than 90 percent R B 10. So, the brick should be less than 10 percent because you want to use them as aggregate. So, you do not want too much of brick. So, where it is brick glass etcetera this is less than and where it is concrete and natural stone it is more, more than. So, you know this similarly thing floating stone 0, S 0, etcetera, etcetera. So, this is how they classify them, right? The European code they classify it in this manner, okay. Characteristics or whatever you do, you cannot get as good as natural aggregate, right? For example, water absorption of Recycled aggregate RCA is always higher than you know non recycled aggregate, that is your natural aggregate. You, you just cannot help it because there will be different interfaces, porosities of those materials, they are different. So, water absorption is usually higher, the rate of absorption is also more, suction rate. So, that means you have also total porosity is more, and there are significant amount of finer pores also which controls the rate of absorption. Then lower bulk density and specific gravity. Bulk density obviously specific gravity is less, bulk density will be less because their shapes are also crushed and they would not pack very well as good as natural stones. Crushing value, abrasion, abrasion mass loss are higher. Crushing value is aggregate, crushing value used for quality of aggregate, right. So, what we do is we take a specific size lesser between 12.5 mm to 10 mm and then put them under load in a particular rate for example 40 ton ton in 4 minutes right and when you do that major a good lot of them would get crushed so now sieve it through 2.36 2.36 millimeter sieve and this percentage is called aggregate crushing value like similarly aggregate impact value is also there so 40 ton in 4 minutes just to recollect you know in 4 minutes for your purpose, this is how the load is applied and this value if it is higher, it means that it is a poor 
poorer aggregate. So, these values are higher. Similarly, aggregate mass loss if it is more, these are poorer. So, the recycled aggregate do not have the same kind of quality as our normal natural aggregate. So, you have to be use them judiciously. Now, total absorption if you look at it 10 minutes you know time versus so 80 percent comes in 10 minutes itself and after that of course, it remains I mean does not most of it gets absorbed very quickly. Obviously, since the shape is, is crushed and there are a lot of absorption particularly is crushed. So, lower workability you would not pack very well you would need more cement paste in the system to come to the same level of flow. So, lower workability mixing process may generate more fines because already it is you know it is crushed. So, there must be a lot of uh, what you call fracture planes already existing the moment you do further mixing a little bit of abrasion that would result in may result in more fines right. So, coarser size one may become finer. So, that is also another issue porosity permeability of concrete is higher lower compressive strength I mean obviously, hence appropriate proportion that is what is required you know you can always design the system. Supposing no no it is bad it is not a problem. Supposing no you know that it does not perform as good as the normal aggregate natural aggregate you need not actually be worried about it because you can design the system. Now, you cannot design very high strength matrices or high strength cement based composite with this because aggregate themselves will fail. Normal strength concrete it is the aggregate mortar interface or more you know paste interface which are the weakest link aggregate themselves are stronger. So, that you might use a slightly lower strength or lower strength potential aggregate right in normal strength concrete. But if you want to have high strength concrete where interface ITZ is very strong ITZ is made strong there the failure might start from the aggregate itself. So, you cannot may use this aggregate. So, selectively you can use this aggregate design the system in such a manner something of the kind of 30 MPA concrete 40 MPA concrete can be easily made out of this sort of aggregate. So, your bulk of concrete is actually that very high strength concrete will have smaller sections and we use it selectively because of the cost and other issues. So, therefore, this you know one can make use of them main problem comes with this old ITZ and the new ITZ that is what I showed you earlier. So, weakest they are the weakest link actually E is, e is lower with stress strain curve similar to the normal concrete right E is lower with stress strain curve some similar to. So, shrinkage can be lower, but fire performance you know shrinkage can be lower, but fire performance it basically would depend because it may not I mean it may provide some better insulation depending upon the situation, but they may strength or performance in terms of uh, stability structure you know strength stability mechanical stability that might be lowered. So, these are the issues actually with this poor durability problem carbonation resistance is lower and chloride resistance is also lower. So, that is what has been seen what I am trying to say is you see I think I think this diagram most probably I have you know this diagram that is what I said that is the original aggregate old aggregate and that is its old ITZ you have one would have tried to remove them as much as possible, but that is involves cost heating etcetera etcetera, but even if you removed fully you may not be able to remove. So, the this is the old ITZ now new mortar which has come in or new ITZ will come in. So, this is your new mortar adhering to it old mortar old mortar sticking to it and new ITZ will come here and you will have new mortar on its surrounding new mortar will be there in its surrounding. So, therefore, now anyway this was the weakest link earlier. So, now the aggregate itself becomes poorer because of the this link right and this is another weak link. So, as long as this this weak link 
and this weak link they are similar strength I mean similar performance wise it is fine which means that you cannot use it for a very high strength system high strength system. So, normal concrete you can really use them and this also results in all other properties as we have seen absorption and everything because this will be now absorbing the mortar will be absorbing aggregates are generally you know they are pieces of rocks essentially they come from the parent rock. So, therefore, their absorption is very less for them, but this will have absor higher absorption and so is this. So, that is why your absorption is higher, but you can use them judiciously and bulk of your natural aggregate can be replaced if you have designed them, designed the system properly right. Okay. Now, there are several things people have tried to do. For example, soak them in fly ash, dip them in fly ash right. So, I will come to that, but dip them this is your yeah, rubber tires and all this has been used, but before that let us many people have tried to do what put this aggregate this aggregate this aggregate in fly ash you know put them in fly ash put them in fly ash immerse them in fly ash submerge them completely fly ash. So, fly ash will penetrate into this one and the calcium hydroxide of the new cement you know which are new one that that will try to react. So, pozzolanic reaction might improve it somewhat these are the attempts that are being made besides heat treatment and so on which I discussed earlier. So, these are also being tried to improve this this business this is what was poor because this mortar adhering and this is old it is they are the poorer one. So, if you can improve so fi fine material which can go into this supposing you put it in a fly slurry. So, since this very pores are there this pores will be filled in with fly ash and the calcium hydroxide liberated from the cement that you have added in the new concrete they might react and improve. So, some improvements you do see, but this kind of things a lot of research is still required. Other materials which are tried are people have tried like rubber tires you know, but I do not think they can come to uh, they are for specific purposes for example, insulation damp you increase the damping properties you might put rubber in the concrete you know damping properties right. So, the structurally structural properties may not be very very good Man, then then when these are fly ash for example, fly ash you can sinter them make aggregate out of them, but then you are using energy manufactured from some fine fines like fly ash as I said then processed sugar cane bagas processed and all that right and recycled bottles but in alkaline system glasses are problem people have tried all sorts of thing uh, you know uh, hemp crete straw crete this in Europe you see a um, lot of work on this. Uh, Singapore they did quite a bit of work on this kind of materials straw concrete right. So, using straw directly paper crete using paper, but they would have specialized use not in structural concrete insulating concrete for example, you want to make it. So, something like that right and these are also used instead of you know you can manufacture aggregate out of this by different kind of binding. For example, fly ash you might do a geopolymer reaction to produce fines and then use it as replacement of fine aggregate. So, combinations are all possible to reduce down the natural aggregate usage. So, that is what related to our recycled aggregate that is what is related to recycled aggregate right. So, essentially what we see that we can make use of them significant portion of it, but you need an engineered construction and selectively you have to use you just cannot use it as you wish. So, that is that is uh, all about recycled aggregate right. So, we look into then certain other properties grinding we look into grinding because lot of energy is spent in grinding you, you know lot of energy is spent on grinding crushing and of course, the thermal properties are important because of operational energy right. So, if you look at grinding cement grinding coarse aggregate also you actually crush them. So, therefore, this are important and the energy users in this are important right. So, let us look at some of those theories related to this. Now, 
अब अब generally you should have high capacity crusher or grinder right large capacity small power requirement per unit of the product that is formed and it should be producing same sized of aggregate all the time you know through your grinding or crushing because size control is important. If you look at sizes, for example, let us say I have an aggregate, one size aggregate 10 mm down to 10 mm to 4.75 mm. Now, this will have a grading within itself and which we do not know how, is, how it is, right. If it is, if it is appropriate for the best packing, that is a different thing because as you know, the sizes should be such that if I have one large aggregate and you know this is the largest aggregate of course, it is roughly we have seen that it might be you can calculate out simple cubic packing let us say let us assume simple cubic packing. So, this should be the size of the next one right I have this is the size of the larger one smaller one would be the size which will fit into ins fit inside such larger particles and next one should be fitting into this. So, the size ratios are important size ratios are important and their proportion is important because if you have too much proportion of this this will anyway push the you know first of all as I increase the proportion this will push the larger aggregates right what we call particle interference they will push the larger aggregate and if I have too much of it there will be voids left in the single sized particle themselves. If I have single sized particle the porosity depending upon the nature of the packing porosity is constant irref irrespective of the size right. So, there are internal grading within the material also which is important. So, we would like to have single sized product so that to you have some control onto it you know as I said you make it this size ball or this size as ball the porosity is same Poros porosity is volume of pores divided by total volume. So, for simple cubic packing as we understand for simple cubic packing it would be 1 minus or rather you know V minus or let me put it like this straight away say D cube minus pi D cube by 6 divided by D cube because D cube is the total volume. So, porosity is this much so, this dq will cancel out from fdy. So, you are left with simply 1 minus pi by 6 which will come out to be something like 48 percent or some such thing because this is 3.14. So, 3.14 divided by 6 is uh, point how much 52 it will be 0.52 something 523 right. So, 1 minus 523 is 0.48. So, irrespective of the size because the ratio it will be same. So, we would like to have single size particle controlled as much as possible right control as much as possible crushing efficiency is defined in terms of some empirical formulae right crushing efficiency is defined in terms of some empirical formulae obviously cost is very important and work required is proportional to the surface area of the new surfaces created ok. Uh, we might have looked into it when we are discussing about strength, but just we will recollect if there is something with my slides otherwise I will write it down right. Let us see uh, let me see I will come back to this in a moment let me see if this is there no it is not there. So, let me write it straight away you see basically if you have a size like this making into smaller sizes let us say diameter becomes half and this is d by 2 right. So, surface area increases first one had a pi d square you know it is 4 pi r square. So, this divided by uh, which is d by 2 square right. So, pi d square is the surface area and what will be the surface area of this one 
2 into pi d by 2 square right. So, surface area per unit volume if I calculate out then I will get how much pi d cube by 6. So, this is equals to in this case is 6 by d this if I calculate out I will get 6 by 6 into you know 6 into 2 divided by d by 2 actually 6 into 2 divided by d by 2 because diameter of each one is now d by 2. So, 6 divided by d by 2 and twice of this. So, which becomes actually 4 times so, from 6 by d it goes to 4 times 6 by d if I just reduce it by half. Now, you are creating new surfaces, you are creating new surfaces. So, energy associated with it is the surface energy because you are creating new interfaces and this comes from the grinding energy that you are providing for grinding, energy that you are providing for grinding right. So, so therefore, Basically, you know, you have seen in case of strength also when you are looking at strength that fracture means creating new surface and surface area multiplied by the surface energy is what is supplied by strain energy in case of strength. When you are stressing a material, you are supplying strain energy which is half stress into strain per unit volume, right. So, if you know the amount of surface area you are creating by fracture per unit volume you can equate them and find out whatever relationship is there, but I am not interested at the moment and at the moment what we have understood is the moment I reduce down the size I need I create new surfaces and this is in fact not linearly related. You know it is just reduce the size by half surface area increases by 4 times. If you reduce by 3 you will find that possibly it will increase you know it is not linear possibly if it is 3 then this will be d by 3 right and there will be 3 such spheres. So, it will become 9. So, d you know it is if you reduce the surface by reduce the diameter by 2 half surface area increases 4 times if you reduce by 3 surface area increases 9 times and so on and so forth. So, surface area increases as I surface area increases as I crush them or grind them. So, the, I have to supply that energy. However, modeling that is not easy rather you know there are a lot of lot of other things happening losses here and there. So, because energy there are losses of energy right and also there will be losses first of all there is dissipation in the surrounding friction loss etcetera etcetera. So, entropy and all that change. So, therefore, crushing efficiency is constant for a given material and machine of course is independent of size of feed and product crushing efficiency right, but energy required is function of the size. So, there is something called Rating, Rettinger's law when spherical sphericity is same before and after crushing is same then power per unit product is inversely related to the average diameter. So, his law is M is power required is related to inversely proportional to average diameters an empirical relationship right. So, that is that is what it is if the shape is same sphericities are same then shape is same because shape can be defined in terms of sphericity factors. So, if this is same right then this is this is what his law is. So, that is what it is P stands for power required. So, in a crusher or a grinder you feed mass you feed it right. So, it is a feed rate mass per unit time that you are feeding. So, per unit mass is proportional to some constant called rating as coefficient and d s a and d s b are average particle diameters you know before and after crashing. So, this is before and this is after b stands for shape is same shape is same. So, 1 by d minus this is average because exactly same diameter will not be there. So, average. So, therefore, power per unit mass feed rate feed rate that he says is according to this law and it is empirical observed from there observed from there that this is you know this is linearly related 
Then there is another one Kick's law which is slight modification. Kick's law, Kick's law works required is proportional to size reduction ratio independent of sizes. So, how much is the reduced size right and again say it is not you know size ratio both are trying to find it out in terms of ratio in some manner that was linearly related if you see this was linearly related to 1 by d you know previous one was related to 1 by d 1 by d right and this is before and after 1 by d so it is related to 1 by d so 1 by d you know linearly related to 1 by d actually and this is logarithmically related this is logarithmically related ratio size ratio so before and after so log ln of this so the power per unit so this is another one work required is proportional to size reduction ratio this kicks coefficient you see when we do not have full understanding and we cannot derive it from fundamental principle we rely on empirical loss and there can be different ones depending upon how one has done the experiment and found it out but it is dip, it depends on size ratio actually that is what it is before and after so this kicks law now that is what I was saying the fracture concept work required is proportional to the crack tip length at fixed fracture see the crack tip ok let us see if I have some diagram yes this diagram I think I might have shown in concrete technology class and this is what I was looking for in a minute. Uh, if you if you have a already existing flow in the system like a hole elliptic hole the and you are pulling it tensile pull you are giving fracture will progress like this the crack will this will extend in this manner right and rate of yeah so this would this would be this if it is compression obviously there is a tension acting along this direction Poisson's effect and therefore, you will get fracture parallel to the fracture parallel to the direction of the load itself in case of compression in case of tension it goes like this, but mostly crushing means you are applying compression you are applying compressive compressive forces. So, that is why this is important right to understand and if you recollect critical stress you can find out critical stress right which was you know energy strain energy released from theory of elasticity one can know is equals to pi if this was 2 c if this was 2 c this was 2 c if this was 2 c the existing crack length you know is 2 c existing crack length this was a hole the crack fracture progressed went to 2 c right this is of course 2 b this this distance. So, 2 c if this is 2 c then what you have seen is the critical stress or strain energy release is given by pi c square by sigma square by E that is from theory of elasticity you know using a closed form solution one can get that the stress around stress concentration around such a crack right. And the surface energy will simply increase as 4 C T because you have one crack here hole and there is another crack here. So, 2 C is this length, 2 surfaces would be there one on, one on this side, one on that side. So, therefore, this is C and if I take unit length 2 C on one side, 2 C on the other side. A crack, if I have a crack that means I have one surface this side, another surface this side. No, crack means one surface is here, another surface is here. So, 2 C if the length of the crack is 2 C, then this is 2 C and thickness if it is unity then it is 2 c into 1. So, 2 c into 2 because this side is 2 c this side is 2 c makes it 4 c t. So, that is what is strain energy is required to create if t is the surface energy per unit area area is 4 c into 1 area is 4 c into 1 multiplied by t is the energy required is the energy required multiplied by t is the energy required to create those surfaces and this comes from the strain energy. So, when strain energy release rate is parallel to this or in other words if I differentiate this with respect to C D D C and differentiate this with respect to C which is 4 T then I get an expression you know that is the one at that C cracks will propagate spontaneously. I want to find out the C at which crack will propagate 
spontaneously right crack would propagate spontaneously. So, it would depend upon the sigma value the stress level I am interested in the stress at what C stress you know stress level at a given C when crack will propagate spontaneously. So, as the as I apply stress crack will you know crack will start propagating when I have gone to the stress level which is related by this sort of a relationship pi you know differential differentiation of this is equals to 4 t. Now, this is the expression actually this is the expression sigma you can derive from this one because if you differentiate this you get twice pi c sigma square by e is equals to 4 t and this is 2. So, 2 t e divided by pi c and sigma square. So, sigma becomes. So, this is the critical stress at which for a given c this is the critical stress as it is fracture will progress spontaneously. So, you see critical stress is proportional to this. So, this is this let us go back to this this is important to you know. So, work required is proportional to crack tip length in the fracture. So, the stress at this point is important this is the simplest Griffith's law you know the fracture mechanics of course, is improved much higher than this. So, this is what we looked at critical stress at which fracture will propagate and remember in if you have attended a course on concrete technology we said the strength is a function of the pore size as well it together with the porosity. So, this follows from here because larger this size larger this size lesser will be the critical stress required. Okay. This lesser will be the critical stress. So, here also grinding is something to do with bonds law work required is proportional to the crack tip length at fracture crack tip length at fracture it is empirical. So, it is the crack tip length he is talking about at the fracture point. So, he is come more realistic than the previous two laws. Okay. So, we will just, just discuss this at this moment. Mm -hmm.